All right, a lot of current events today. I split them up into two videos because that one was too long as it was, and this next one is is uh, is kind of specific. But lots going on in the EU right now. No one's watching the EU. We're all watching North Korea. We're all watching China. Some some folks in there are watching Saudi Arabia. A lot going on in Saudi Arabia too, but. But EU is where the interest, the European Union is where the interesting things are going on right now. You're probably hearing a little bit about Spain, and it sounds like sort of a, a local regional conflict. Uh, and and we've, we've talked about it in one of our videos recently, too. It, it's ratcheted up a couple of notches, but it has much broader implications EU wide. And that has very broad implications worldwide because the European Union is the largest single market in the world right now they claim uh, that you, you know how they can do numbers that they, they might not be but that's what they claim so what's going on <sighs> a lot of history here and I, i'm not going to waste too much of your time on it. i'm, I'm going to try to get to how it affects you because it does affect you all right let's let's say this here's how it affects you all right the eu is is the world's largest single market right now uh the the the, the european economy is I won't say fragile because that might be giving it too much uh, credit. It's very tenuous. Uh, they're really, really trying to uh, to launch to get what they exit velocity and get growth moving again. They're having a real hard time. They're held back by Italy, by Spain, by Portugal, uh, in, in the southern countries. Uh, France has some pretty high, pretty high youth unemployment. Uh, everywhere where there's population stagnation. Uh, They've they've got this this growth problem, and of course when you're fueled when you're debt fueled growth is growth is vital. When you have high debt, when you're based on debt, you have to grow. You have to have growth to be able to to just and service that debt and everything. And they don't have any growth because they don't have population increases, and that's why they're so frantically driving this immigration thing because they think that they can you know they've they've bought into the the modern foolishness that any one person can substitute in for any one other one person and, and culture doesn't matter. Uh, we, we, that's not what this video is about. We won't go there. Uh, so, what's, so, so what's going on in Spain is they're having this, this constitutional crisis where this one region, Catalonia, wants to break away and, and form their own country and Spain is resisting. Uh, so, so this puts uncertainty into Spain anyway, which already is, is fragile. And all these countries are interconnected. I'm, I can't remember who's mostly exposed to Spain. It may have been Italy, but it could be Germany. Germany is exposed to all these people. And if Germany goes down, the whole EU goes down, the whole world economy goes into a giant recession, most likely depression, this is how it affects you. I, I didn't go there. I'm sorry, I forgot. This is how it affects you. If, if, the, if the EU suffers major economic problems, the world is going to suffer major economic problems, and some dominoes are going to start falling. Uh, you know, the EU is weak. All the, the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and, and South Africa are all very weak. Uh, and China is, uh, especially is kind of on a knife's edge right now. Uh, the, you know, India, uh, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa are all pretty much in recession. China is kind of like right there on the knife's edge. they got all these balls in the air and they're keeping all these numbers inflated. If, if there's a major problem in Europe... And that market kind of gets depressed for China. That that could be the straw that breaks that camel's back. And then China's down. And then all we've got is America. And everyone still kind of can't explain America. You know, we're we're treading water, but we're not growing. Uh, so anyway, that's how all this affects you. E EU e EU could really be what pushes the world economy over into major recession, depression, possibly cataclysmic. You know economic reset that we've all sort of been expecting for so long uh, so what, what what could happen so the the Spanish police and, and the Spaniards came in and really cracked down on these Catalonian uh, separatists there was some you know bloody noses and cracked heads and a big deal and the Catalonians are sort of screaming hey we we were where is the EU we went to EU to come in we're citizens of the EU and the EU is going to start debating this stuff big big Big, 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 big. Because one of two things is going to happen. The EU is either going to say, oh, no, this is a national issue. It doesn't involve us. We have to stay out of it. In which case you have a weakened, I won't say weakened, but in which case the EU has has boxed itself in uh, as uh, it's put limits on its own authority and power. And you have a limited EU, uh, 
which could cascade, you know, lead these anti-EU forces to momentum. Or the EU could say, could, could make a power grab and say, these are EU citizens and we have to get involved here and, and we have a role in protecting these Catalonians from their, their national government, uh, which would be a huge power grab. And that could go one of two ways. The EU could fail somehow and be weakened in front of, in everyone's eyes, or they could succeed <laughs> and, uh, and strengthen the whole European Union. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not sure what comes out of that. That kind of gets, that, that, that's beyond my ability to, my, my knowledge, expertise level. Uh, if, if the EU got into this thing, succeeded, uh, uh, amassed all this power in Europe and, and became that much more important and, and, and proved it could supersede national governments in its dealings with its own citizens, which I think they already claimed that, but you know, this would be a real uh, big declaration of that. I don't know what happens there. Well, I don't know what comes next. Uh, I, I, w I would imagine the EU bureaucrats would get really excited and, and probably overreach at that point and grab too much. But, uh, but if they did make this, this play and failed, you know, it would greatly weaken the EU. And which is already, you know, there, there's a lot of members, you know, up there, Hungary, Poland, uh, I know those are the two big ones, but there may be some more, and I'm not remembering off the top of my head. They're already highly EU skeptic. Uh, they, they're kind of already wanting out of this sucker. You know, if there's a big fail, a big push in in Spain where EU tries to, to trump national sovereignty and fails and, and sort of comes out weekend with a black eye, you, you could see a, a, a greater move to leave the EU. The, a breakup of the EU, which is probably in everyone's best interest long term, because you know, there's going to be a major world war. It, it, they, they start in Europe, folks. I mean, they always have. They always will uh, for, for the foreseeable future. If there's going to be a major world war, it's going to start in Europe, and it's going to involve the EU. So a breakup of the EU long term is a good thing. Uh, short term, massive, massive problems with, uh, with the EU debt and reestablishing national economies and national uh, monetary systems and the whole nine yards. Pretty much whatever comes out of this EU situation right now is, unless the EU makes a play in Spain and wins and asserts its power and becomes more robust, in which case, you know, what would come out of that is a, a, U, a EU military. That's what would come out of that. They would then start pushing for a, a U, EU military force. That's the only scenario that doesn't hurt the European economy, and in which case then... Uh, has a, a, a very bad negative effect on everyone else's economy uh, and and maybe we start seeing some dominoes fall the one to watch is Germany and when Germany and when when the Germans start getting scared you know there's problems uh, Germany is the tent pole of Europe and and if, if the Germans are worried then then this thing is is on the verge so there you go uh, the EU isn't sexy the Catalonians and Spanish independence the Catalonians' independence from Spain isn't sexy, but the other thing to watch here is that you know we're hearing about the Catalonians, but don't forget the Scots are trying to break away from from England. Uh, there's two provinces in Italy. Province may not be the right term here, but, uh, but there's there's two geographic areas in Italy. Uh, I want to say Lombardy was one, and I don't remember the other one. It was a V. Uh, zero Hedge. I, I read Zero Hedge a lot. Zero Hedge has an article on this. Uh, but there's two places in Italy that want to break away. Uh, the the Flemish are trying to break away in Belgium. Uh, who else? There's oh uh, Corsica's always trying to break away. That's that's ongoing. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, and then New Caledonia and a few others that that aren't as important. But there's there's a oh the Basques in Spain. That's it. The Basques are trying to break away. Uh, so Spain is coming apart at the seams. Uh, and Spain has always been a, a problem in Europe and always will be. But uh, so so watch the EU right now. There's a lot going on in the EU. And if these, this Catalonia thing, if the Catalonians win, expect to see the Basques next, the Scots keep going, the Flemish, uh, and some of these other groups uh, who are trying to splinter and make you know make these new countries uh, and, uh, and and balkanize uh Europe, which which makes sense, you know. I mean, 
the Balkans were a little microcosm of Europe. Here I go, boring history, I'm sorry. You know, we, we made this, uh, this fake country out of all these different ethnic groups, and then we acted surprised when they, they, they splintered back up into their old groups. This is, this is going too long, man. I'm so sorry. We appreciate you. I wanted to do a video about Sukkot, but uh, now's not the time. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow or, or the next day. But uh, take it easy, all right, man?